This is the story of a successful, honest, and hardworking man who became the president of an amateur football club. Or at least, so it seemed. Thanks to his financial funds, the club rose through the ranks and had success after success. But then, his life was suddenly taken, and it became clear that he wasn't the businessman he said he was. It turns out that he was one of the Netherlands' biggest heroin smugglers. And the suspect of the hit on his life? His former captain of the team turned drug smuggling rival. This is the story of Nadim Imac. Nadim Imac was born in The Hague in 1966 to Turkish parents who moved to the Netherlands for work. They worked in the Indola factory, a factory that manufactured hairdressing supplies. Due to the long hours his parents made because of work, they could not properly watch after their son. There also wasn't a babysitter available, so Nadim ended up with the wife of his parents' boss. She took care of him and gave him the typical Dutch upbringing. As he grew older, he would go on to say that he had gotten more love from her than his own parents. At the beginning of his 20s, Nadim became a successful textile entrepreneur. This business made him very wealthy. Well, that's what people thought at least. In 1990, Nadim heard about a small-time football club in the area of Amsterdam through some of his employees. It was so small that they did not even have any light poles around the field. It was just a field, a canteen, and a dressing room. However, they made it work and had fun with each other. Nadim decided to visit one of their practices and immediately became excited. This excitement caused him to make a big decision that same day. He decided to financially help the club in the hopes of taking it to the next level. Within a short matter of time, he became the president of the club and nothing but glory years would follow. The first thing he did was to change the name of the club. Instead of ACS, the name that was widely associated to a mosque, he wanted something different. He opted for the name Turki Yemspor. Nicknamed the Little Dictator, Nadim reigned with an iron fist over his club. Within eight years, the club went from the lowest amateur level to the highest amateur level in the Dutch league. No one realized that this growth was all thanks to Nadim's own money and not the meager profit the club itself made. He funded the best possible players and coaches all from his own pockets. It led to suspicion among some. But if someone started talking about drugs money or money laundering, Nadim simply pointed to a successful textile business and that would end the conversation. However, those people who raised suspicion were definitely onto something. Slowly but surely, more well-known criminals from Amsterdam started showing up to the club, one of which was Sinol Tuna, who was an enforcer for Willem Holeder. Sinol once even put his firearm on a player's head after they got into a heated discussion. Other criminals that visited were men like Attila O and Dino Sorel. Another interesting figure related to the club is a man named Ali Aggen. Ali was a very good footballer that nearly made it pro. He just missed that professionalism to really become successful. But that didn't matter for Turkey Emspor. For this club, he became their captain and most valuable player. And because he was such a skilled player, him and Nadim bonded very fast. Their bond grew into a solid and trusted relationship and went beyond football president and player. As some said, many saw them as brothers or even as father and son. In 1999, after the club got promoted to the second highest level in the Football League, they made the champions photo where you can see Nadim and Ali in the middle of that picture. The duo seemed unstoppable. Nobody would have thought when Nadim bought the club that they would have gotten this far. And that made it all more interesting why Ali suddenly stopped at the beginning of the 2000s. Here's where several rumors started twirling. The reason given for his departure was that he had gotten too heavy and unfit at the beginning of the season and just wasn't game ready physically. But that wasn't the case at all. It was assumed that Ali had gone down the road of criminality a few years ago already. His departure wasn't because of his weight. No, Ali and Nadim had gotten into a fight over drugs. There were two very strong rumors doing its rounds. One was that Ali had set up his own smuggling routes and became a direct competitor of his so-called brother Nadim. The second was that Ali was responsible for a missing shipment of coke that Nadim was involved in as well. Whichever of the two reasons it may be, it resulted in a clash between Nadim and Ali. The two could drink each other's blood. It also revealed the other side of Nadim. Many who thought that Nadim was a successful entrepreneur were kind of right. He was indeed successful in making his own money. However, what many did not know was that he was in fact one of the bosses of the Turkish heroin mafia. He was very, very successful in that. And with this business, he accumulated his wealth over time. The club was just a toy for him. Trouble started brewing in January 2006. Relatively out of nowhere, 
Nadim decided to step down as president of the club. Why? Well, he said he needed to take care of his sick mother. However, shortly after he resigned, the club was hit with a hefty 1.3 million euro tax debt that had to be paid. Police had him on their radar for a while and did extensive research into his finances and found out that the club's finances had been tampered with. What would happen next in 2007 was unexpected and raised many questions. In the Amsterdamse wijk Osdorp is zaterdagavond bij een brutale aanslag Nedim Imak doodgeschoten. Imak is oud voorzitter van de voetbalclub FC Turkimspor. On the 17th of February 2007, Nadim went out for dinner at a Turkish restaurant in Amsterdam to celebrate his son's birthday. As he was about to enter the restaurant, two or three people in a white Mercedes van fired off multiple shots towards Nadim's direction. He was struck multiple times and the van sped off. Nadim was no more. After the hit, Dutch police named Nadim as one of the biggest players in the Turkish heroin mafia and stated that the hit was definitely related to that. People immediately started talking. Was that the truth? And even more importantly, was Ali involved? The team picture of the two next to each other still hung on the football club's cafeteria. To make it even more interesting, a Dutch crime website named CrimeSite reported that Nadim was in fact a criminal infiltrator. According to the website, he was allowed to run his drug smuggling business in return for information about key players in the heroin business. If this was true, did someone find out that he was working with the police? Interestingly enough, and despite their once so strong bond, Ali did not attend Nadim's funeral in Istanbul. It is said that he paid family members to cover some costs of the funeral. It makes you think though, did he not attend the funeral because he ordered the hit, but just wanted to make a bold statement to then pay for the funeral? Or was he really not involved, but could just not make the funeral and thought the least he could do was to help financially? Just two months after that incident, Ali was arrested on the suspicion of being the orchestrator of several successful hits and attempted hits in the underworld people started to believe he took out Nadim as well. Especially after Dutch hitman turned crown witness Fred Ross said that he had gotten the assignment by Ali to take out Nadim, but ultimately did not do it. He gave me the assignments to get rid of Nadim for 80,000 euros. I accepted the money from Ali, he had said during an interrogation. Despite these confessions by Fred, it must be said that Ali was later acquitted for almost everything and has never been prosecuted for the hit on Nadim. 16 years after his passing, there is still no one arrested for the hit on Nadim. The case remains unsolved and it is not actively investigated anymore, making it a cold case as they call it. Ali Atkin was eliminated himself on the 24th of December 2014, so he will not be able to tell us his truth anymore. <laughs>